Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I tell you what, I've got some huge things going on here at the Reptile Zoo. You know we're always trying to improve, expand, do things awesome. Well, you know, I've talked about it in the past about this wall and the fact that we are trying to expand next door uh, and uh, I've got some big news about what's gonna happen there. Hopefully, uh, lots going on with that, but uh, I'm gonna check on that later in the vlog. As for now, I'm gonna go over and check colubrids, see what hatches today, because I love starting my day with baby snakes, because it's absolutely incredible. Let's have an amazing day together. Let's head over to BHB and see if we have any baby colubrids hatching. And like I've been mentioning, I love starting the day seeing little baby snakes, and look at all these little corn snakes here. Oh my gosh, oh, this is really weird. You can see this is actually a het plasma clutch, which are actually lavender diffused corns, but all all of these babies here, all these little corn snakes are just normal hats here, but you can see one little hypo lavender. I can't tell if it's a plasma yet until it actually comes out of the egg, but it's definitely a lavender, it's definitely a hypo, so it's interesting to see what's gonna happen here. So that's really weird odd that you'd hatch all these baby corn snakes, and then there's at least one. It looks like there's a couple more eggs to hatch too, so we could have some more lavender stuff in there. I'm not 100% sure, but nevertheless, uh, still a beautiful clutch of corn snakes. Oh, look at this, these are actually Mexican black Black king snakes right here, and they're all just pipped out. None are out of the egg, just a bunch of albumin pipping out. And for those of you that don't know, snakes actually have what they call an egg tooth, which is on the very tip of their nose, and that's actually how they cut these eggs by themselves. And that's just how they get out of the egg. All right, let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, guys, take a look at this. Hoo -hoo. These are the first scaleless corn snakes of the year right here. Oh my gosh, look at the cute little monkeys right there. And there's a bunch of them here too. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six scaleless corn snakes in this clutch right here. Oh my God, that is so exciting. And of course, scaleless corn snakes is a recessive mutation that's lacking keratin, which makes up scales, right? So that is amazing. These guys are so beautiful. And what happens with scaleless corns because they don't have scales is they actually get all the vermiculite kind of stuck all over them. So what we'll do is we'll wash these guys off. We'll get them set up and good to go. Looks like uh, we're about to have a can of worms here, guys. Uh, things are starting to get on the move. I'm gonna go ahead, Shut him up. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Okay, so uh, now I've got a handful of snakes uh, and I've got to somehow get them in this box. It's going to be hard. So I'm going to set the camera down. There's the baby colubrids for the day. I'm absolutely amazing little monkeys. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, I'm in trouble, guys. Oh boy. Uh, I'm in trouble. Oh boy. There's snakes everywhere. Oh, there's no way I'm going to get these back in the box. Okay. Oh boy. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, all right. I just keep getting more snakes in my hand. Right. Okay, whew. I tell you what, that was uh that was sketchy is all heck, but uh, all the babies are back in the clutch. Uh, no heads are caught, and that does conclude the baby clubers for the day. A lot of people ask like what we feed our leopard geckos, and the truth is that the majority of what we feed our leopard geckos are mealworms, and animals like the sun glow bell basically can live off of mealworms. But of course, if you're gonna do mealworms as your primary thing, you need to supplement them with vitamins. So we definitely use a calcium and then a multivitamin called vionate. We do one part to calcium to three parts to vionate, and that's really important. Important. But the thing that I love about leopard geckos is that, is that you can sustain them just on mealworms. So people that don't like crickets, you don't have to worry about our other type of living bugs and stuff like that. And basically what we do is we just put mealworms in the cage. Once a week, we go ahead and put fresh mealworms in, we dust them, and then we leave them in there all week. So you don't have to feed them every day or three times a week. You can just feed them once a week, whatever they're gonna actually eat in that bowl with all those mealworms. It's really cool. But we do go through a lot of mealworms. And just to give you a perspective, we go through about 140,000 mealworms per week. With our breeders here, there's four females per group, so we feed them all about 100 mealworms per week, and then I go through and check, and if they've eaten all their mealworms, I give them a lot of crickets too, just on top of that, just to make sure everyone's nice and fat and healthy. Got a little quick uh, unboxing really quick, and I think what this is, is this is from our fan group on Facebook, the Reptile Keepers for Brian Barczyk fan page. So uh, Michelle, Bill, all the people over there said that something was coming today, and so I don't know what it is but uh, I'm excited to see what they sent. Let's see what we got. Okay, so what do we got? Carnivorous plant nursery growing. Car so okay, so it's a whole bunch of stuff about growing carnivorous plants. So uh, they said that uh, it had something to do with. Oh my gosh, look at this. Huh. 
This is awesome. So these are all like carnivorous plants and it has like the whole package for them. And this like is there's the medium obviously you yeah, plant them in. Yeah, you plant them in this and then these guys have all these little plants. Uh, I'm anxious to see what kind of plants there are. There's like those picture plants and there's no Venus flytraps in here, but I don't know a whole lot about plants or carnivorous plants, but that's awesome. So thank you guys again if uh, if I put a link in the description to that fan group. Amazing people, really great Facebook group. We all know that a lot of Facebook groups aren't the best. These guys are unbelievable. <laughs> when it comes to like tolerance you can ask questions and they won't yell at you for asking questions uh really great people over there so thank you for the carnivorous plants so uh awesome what do you think all right let's set them up let's not kill these <laughs> okay back over here at the Repterum and basically what it is is obviously this wall doesn't look that impressive right now but the truth is is that I've talked to my friend that has a tattoo shop next door he is definitely going to be moving uh, not exactly sure when I hope by the end of summer we can start it but what basically has to happen is we have to make sure from an engineering standpoint we can open this wall up here and basically what I'm going to do is I'll probably keep this where it's at I'll have a little bit here and then maybe an opening goes from here to here like a nice archway that we can do some really cool rocks and timbers and stuff like that and you'd walk in over here I've talked about before that I want to do snake massage right well of course it's a tattoo shop so there's like five rooms over there I probably blow out all the rooms on one side so we can expand more habitats like this so we can add more stuff again bigger habitats for salt and pepper maybe I don't know something for Arctic I'm not 100% sure definitely want to build like a big anaconda display so that when I get a big anaconda I can have it over there some more aquatic stuff really cool stuff but I thought I'd probably leave three of the rooms on the other side two of those rooms maybe I could do snake massages so right that'd be awesome the other thing is that we only have birthday parties when we're not open at the Reptarium so now we'll have a room where we could do birthday parties or you guys can come and have a birthday party when we're open for the Reptarium not to mention we have twice the amount of space which would be absolutely incredible <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you this next idea is kind of crazy it's kind of out there uh, and, and I've got to show you really so that you understand what I'm thinking you'll probably think I'm insane but I think it's gonna be really cool I've talked about it a little bit but uh, but but let me let me do a few things I'll get back to you and I'll fill you in on this, this last insane idea I have for next door. Again, continuing to update you guys on the animals that we are hatching. This was actually a Woma Lesser Pin bred to a pinstripe. Some really beautiful babies. When they hatched up, they were really incredible. Starting with this little guy right here. This is actually a Woma Pinstripe. So the Woma Pinstripe together just makes that kind of same pinstripe pattern. Just a little bit more reduction. And again, they have a little bit of barring that goes down their size that you typically don't see with a pinstripe. But I absolutely love Woma Pins. They're real simple two bang mutation but really cool here's another one of those guys another Woma pinstripe but this one's just a little bit lighter than the last one so it's just got a little bit different pattern but again that's the polymorphism within ball pythons is that every animal even if it's the same genetics looks a little bit different and that's what makes it so absolutely awesome as a matter of fact I'm going to show you a third before we jump into another one another one that I think is absolutely incredible and different again another Woma pinstripe so we got three Woma pinstripes in this clutch which was pretty cool, but we have a bunch of other stuff too. Look at this little dude here. Ooh, doggy, that thing is amazing. This is the Woma Lesser Pinstripe. And for whatever reason, when you mix those three genes together, you get this really soft, subtle looking animal that has a really reduction in pattern. We produced the very first Woma Lesser Pinstripes, I don't know, a long time ago. So nevertheless, whenever we hatch these guys, I'm always super excited. And again, just like the Woma Pinstripes, the Woma Lesser Pinstripes are polymorphic as well. I mean, you definitely see a difference between that last one and this one. So we had two Woma Lesser pinstripes in this clutch absolutely love them and then we just had one little normal pinstripe and remember I told you sometimes pinstripe to pinstripe you get just a little bit more clean and a little bit more reduction of pattern this guy is gorgeous and then of course we have just a normal lesser ball python too so this would just be the single gene co-dominant blue-eyed leucis why is my truck moving and this would be in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you breed lesser to lesser, on average, one in four are going to produce blue-eyed leucistics. Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, okay. So this is the combination of those two animals I just showed you. This is a pinstripe and a lesser. They call these guys kingpins. Of course, the jigsaws are the pinstripe and the Mojave, which are very similar animals. The lesser is just a little bit lighter than a Mojave, but still in that blue-eyed leucistic complex as well. And then, of course, we have the other combination here, which is the Woma and the lesser ball python. 
one. And again, when you mix those two together, you just get this really wacky, wild pattern, kind of a cool color to it. So anyways, that's it for what hatch on this clutch. We have a bunch more stuff that we're going to be cutting over the next few days. And I think we've got one more clutch that's going to hatch that is absolutely incredible. Hopefully I'll be able to show you tomorrow or maybe the next day. I've been mentioned over the last month or so that again, I want the vlog to be a little bit more about the day to day grind as much as everything else with the animals and stuff like that. So of course we have a great crew over here at the Reptarium, which means a lot of work needs to get done every single day. Maintenance, feeding, watering, all that type of stuff. Bruce and Andrea really head up the majority of over here, but we have a whole host of people that help out. Today, Andrea's got a lot of work to do. So let's just follow her around a little bit and you'll get an idea what it's like to take care of this many animals at the Reptarium. Okay, so back to my sane idea. All the units here have basements, of course. This is the basement room for the Reptarium that we're working on building like a gecko room down there and a couple other things, a podcast room because we want to start a podcast. But think about this, guys. I, again, I know this is absolutely crazy, but next door, there's nothing down there. What if I built this entire stairway kind of like a cave entrance, right? So you'd walk in, it'd be all rocks and you'd have to walk down. There'd be some like lantern lights on the side and stuff like that. You walk downstairs and maybe there's a couple big aquatic tanks. I've talked about how I've wanted to do like a swimming with where maybe you can get in with Elvis or you could get in with a big python or maybe even RJ and uh, have that swimming experience. Of course you would have to book it in advance because it wouldn't be like just show up and we'll do it because we'd have to make sure that I'm here or some handlers here. But uh, I thought that maybe the basement would be a perfect area because we could do some pretty big pools and uh, and it would be awesome. So that that idea may be a little bit crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little far fetched. But my point is is that the Reptarium looks Looks like it's going to expand, get bigger, more animals, more habitats, more opportunity to do cool stuff when you're here. So let me know in the comments if you're as excited as I am. We still have a long way to go. Again, it's probably going to be the end of summer before we can even really start looking at it. And then maybe it'll be sometime around the first of the year before we're done or even close to being done. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, certainly by next year, hopefully the Reptarium will be twice the size and there'll be all kinds of new stuff that you guys can do. So today's big project is cleaning the tortoise pen. We try to clean out at least one or two cages a day, give them a little revamp. But first, we need to take the tortoises out, so let's get to it. And hey, if we're gonna get Matilda out, we might as well go ahead and weigh her. Remember when we got her, she's 107 pounds. Not sure if she's really added weight or not, but we're gonna find out in a second here. All right, ready, girl? Come on up, baby girl. Just put her on the bucket here. It's 111 and a half pounds. So she's gained almost four pounds, which is pretty good. That's a lot of lettuce and uh, uh, veggies that she's eating for sure. And she's on her way. Matilda, you're such a good girl. I see her stretch her legs. I know, she's gonna love it. She's just gonna walk around like crazy. Oh my God, that's awesome. So my girl is growing. And that wraps up a pretty eventful day. Hope that you guys enjoyed the vlog. Let me know in the comments because I love reading about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.